Hi everyone, welcome to uh, this screencast which is on the functionalist perspective of family. Um, what we're going to look here at is that we're going to examine the functionalist ideas on family and also society as a whole. We're going to do that by answering a few questions. What is the functionalist viewpoint? Uh, how are or were their ideas formulated? What are the criticisms and support of the theory and how can the theory help us understand everyday society? We're actually going to focus on these questions and answer these questions by looking at this PowerPoint, obviously, but also on a lot of classwork that we'll be doing next week. Uh, so you need to bring your notes along. So not all of those answers, all of those questions even, will be answered in this screencast. Um, but there will be by the time you look at the screencast and the classwork. We'll delve into the ideas of functionalists as well and try to understand their origins and apply it to society. You're going to have some views on it, okay? You're going to have some very... Uh, negative views on it you might have some positive views I'm not 100% sure mainly negative because it's quite old-fashioned some people say but yeah we'll deal with those in class next week so what do functionalists believe well society is based on a value consensus that's basically where we have a set of shared norms and values that everyone kind of agrees on okay this enables us to have a harmonious cooperative environment okay where no one's really arguing with each other or disagreeing with each other every part of society plays a part it has a function okay so media have a function the education system the government system family religion they all have a part to play and they all have to work well together and follow this value consensus so society is, in the rise of functionalists, a working system. Okay, they believe that society is made up of lots of different parts, as I've just mentioned: media, religion, etc., etc., etc. And they all depend on each other to work, and they work together, but they work independently. But they still depend on each other. If one fails, then you know we've got a bit of a problem there because society fails in the eyes of functionalists. So if we imagine the body, okay, this is the organic analogy. So each organ has a set function. The example I've got on the board here is if a heart stops doing what it's supposed to be doing, which is pumping blood around the body and decides, oh, you know what, I fancy trying to digest food or I might do a bit of breathing a day, then one thing is going to happen and that is going to die, okay? So functionalists use this analogy to show that if one part of society, and we're focusing on family here, but if one part of society actually starts failing or doing something that it's not supposed to do, Guess what? Society dies. Functionalists see family as this essential, perfect building block of society. Without family, we're knackered. Okay? Without the media, I reckon we could probably get by. But without the family, we are truly knackered. George Peter Murdoch, 1949. Okay? Underlined it here because that is important. Because we're going to need to contextualise when this information was actually come about. Is it still relevant today? Anyway, Murdoch four essential functions of the family he says that the family plays four essential roles that's sexual okay so we have the same partner and that reduces social disruption caused by a sexual free-for-all okay so if we only have one partner then that's one less thing to worry about and then we know where we stand and we know where we are linked very closely to that is obviously reproductive if we don't reproduce we don't have families if we don't have families we don't have society socialization we've discussed this a couple of weeks ago primary socialization so role of the family is to make sure that the children have their shared norms and values okay this consensus and finally it meets the economic needs of the family members as well so it provides food and shelter for family members Murdoch believes that the nuclear families carry out these functions best than everyone else okay so Obviously, with that, it's going to be criticisms of Murdoch. So, some argue that other institutions could easily do these things as well as the nuclear family. What about other types of nuclear family? Why can a single parent mother not actually bring up and socialise that child to know what's right and wrong and also to tell them what the norms and values of the consensus are? Just as easy. Also, this suggestion that it's a very rose tinted view, okay? very much about Marxist and feminist idea this that this is perfect you know picture perfect family sitting around all eating dinner together on a Sunday before they all retire to the living room where dad regales the children with stories while mom is making apple pie ok 
Okay, there's very rose tinted. What about the bad stuff? What about the oppression of women by men and it's meeting the needs of men? Marxists would also argue that it's just, you know, it's another idea of capitalism and family is geared towards capitalism, certainly not geared towards family members or society as a whole. Another key theorist when it comes to functionalism is this guy called Talcott Parsons. Again, note the date, 1955. Working on Murdoch's ideas, he's developed this functional fit family. So basically what Parsons is saying is that the family changes, so do, sorry, as society changes, so does the family. The family changes to meet the needs of society, okay? And there's two clear types of family in Talcott Parsons' eyes. The nuclear family, which we've discussed, parents and dependent children living together and we've also got the extended family which is three generations so grandparent parent children slash grandchildren okay and there's a clear link between a change in society and a change in the classic extended family we're going to see those changes in a second the reason for the changes is this these two types of society exist in pre-industrial society so when industrialization came around in around about the late 18th century the needs of society and that of the family changed when m industrialization came around and again he links a clear link between the change in society and the change in the classic extended family so when industrialization came around society changed and the family had to adapt Parsons identified that we became two kinds of workforce a geographically mobile workforce this is basically where people start moving around for jobs um, instead of staying in the same village or working in the same factory as your dad and your granddad etc etc people started moving around just to find jobs um, could be within the same area could be the country or could be even around the world you know and it's happening today in places like Dubai and uh, Qatar and places like that Parsons argues it's obviously easier to move around if you're a small nuclear family as opposed to an extended family so it was more beneficial in industrialized uh, times to be a small and nuclear family. We became a more socially mobile workforce in that because of the advancements in technology and sciences and also um, the skills required, we started trying to use our talents a lot more to get jobs and we would actually start gaining a status in positions through our own effort and ability, not because of who we are born to um, and how it was ascribed through society and your family background. So for instance, an example obviously on the board here is that if you're the son of a labourer, it could become possible for you to become a solicitor or a doctor. And you know, you wouldn't necessarily have to fill the role that was assigned to you at birth. Problem with this in that Parsons' eyes is that nuclear family is better equipped than the extended family to meet the needs of industrial society because if you're an extended family, you're probably living with your father, okay? Even if you were like a 35-year-old man, you're probably living with your father. And he has kind of ascribed the, the status of head of a household. Now, if you get a better job or you become more successful, there could be cause a conflict there. Um, so nu a modern nuclear family, is, which is smaller, is, a little, is better for that. So Parsons identifies with that that there's a loss of function means that the modern nuclear family has two basic functions, okay? Just some information here that pre-industrial family was very multifunctional, it was self-sufficient, provided its own food, it was a very self-consuming, okay? It was a unit of consumption, but it supplied it for itself. So it'd be either working through a farm or uh, growing food in your own back garden. It would be making clothes for its own members as well. Very more self-sufficient than modern families, okay? Modern families, modern nuclear families became very much consumption over production, okay? Education and health also changed as well. Up until industrialization, a lot of kids were school homeschooled. When industrialization came along and more jobs came out and more people were working, they had more money so they could send them to school, but also there was more schools built and obviously we had a better health service as well. He believes that the loss of function led the family to fulfill him two main roles really now, okay, this is only two things that family actually do, is that the primary socialization, uh, again I'll not go over it, we've discussed it previously, but also the stabilization of adult personalities. Now within a nuclear family we have this sexual division and it creates a stability because women know what their role is and it's very much about the expressive role of warm security emotional support looking after the children housekeeper 
the men have the instrumental role and that is of a breadwinner and that's very stressful in the eyes of functionalists so family has to be a place where you can relax and release tension when they say you can relax it basically means the men really okay and so it needs to be a place where they can go to and switch off from the outside world and the balance of roles actually leads to a stabilization of this so the men know what it, the home is about and the family's about and the women do as well criticisms obviously going to be loads of criticism on this these are just a few of them to discuss all looks a little bit disney and a bit you know a bit nice okay what about all the violence what about the abuse what about the conflict what about the unhappiness it's a bit out of date as i said about the dates on here you know you've got 1940s and the 1950s is it out of date can it be applied to today's society with the increase of different types of family mm, who knows we'll discuss that exploitation of women as well women being seen as a commodity that can be used to fulfill the needs of the men harmful effects of the family as well so we've also got you know privatization of um you know health service and education it's taken more uh, out of the family and how, how it's being used and the dark side of family as well so we've got the uh, you know as I mentioned about the violence and the unhappiness and the things that go behind closed doors that we don't hear about and it creates a cycle of inequality okay so you know if you are a kid and you've been socialized in a household there uh, the mom is clearly seen as the person who looks after the house and the dad is the breadwinner but the most important man in the house then there's a good chance that you're going to be brought up with those uh, ideas those norms those values those beliefs and the cycle is hard to break and there's an issue with that and it will continue to actually happen okay that's basically the end of the theory part what for the i need you to do for the lesson is bring your notes um, I need you to bring ideas as well. Think about what we've talked about. Think about your ideas. Do you disagree? Do you agree for, for in certain aspects? Think about why. Or why do you disagree? Don't just say I disagree. And I need you to bring a positive work ethic. Okay, this is now moving into week three of sociology with me and Jez. This work ethic needs to improve. There's some people who are sitting back, relaxing. You aren't going to get good grades if you do that. You need to get in there and do some work. We will have noted who those are. You need to turn it around now. I uh, will see you all in class next week. Thank you very much. Bye-bye.